This afternoon, it's, anticip it's anticipated that the uh, Palestinian Authority will be granted some form of UN membership. And our great concern as Republicans and Democrats that this is a provocative, unhealthy step that could undermine the peace process. All of us support a two-state solution where the Palestinian people can live in a dignified fashion, a state controlled by Palestinians, secure and prosperous, side by side with an Israeli state that can live in peace without uh, perpetual fear of destruction from their neighbors. That's the only way we can resolve the Palestinian-Israeli issue. UN membership status provided to the Palestinians, I think, undermines the peace process. The last thing the UN or any other body should do is encourage the parties not to sit down and talk with each other. Long story short, the biggest fear I have, and I think my colleagues uh, have, is that if the Palestinians achieve this status, it, will be not, it won't be very long until the Palestinians begin to use the UN as a club against Israel rather than seeking peace. And our big fear is that the International Criminal Court would be available to the Palestinians potentially to file complaints against the IDF and every other institution in Israel and would marginalize uh, the Jewish state. Currently, the Palestinian Authority cannot use the International Criminal Court as a weapon against Israel. Our fear is that this new status will allow them to do so. So in response, we have come up with a bipartisan amendment that does two things. It tells the Palestinian Authority, if you uh, make a petition to the International Criminal Court uh, against the State of Israel, if you go down the International Criminal Court road, uh, that will throw the peace process in a ditch, and we believe that will undermine any chance of a peaceful solution anytime soon, and we will cut off funding. The last thing we want to do is uh, break a relationship between the Palestinians that is mutually beneficial. But today that the Palestinians use their UN status to try to marginalize uh, Israel in their national criminal court, it will be clear to us that we're investing in an unreliable partner. We are broke. I do not mind helping struggling nations because it's in our national security interest. I do not mind investi investing in people who have different views, but I will not, nor will my colleagues, support sending hundreds of millions of dollars to an entity that is going to take their new standing in the United Nations and use it in a destructive way. And I can't think of a more destructive scenario for the future of the peace process than one complaint after another being filed against the IDF. When a pilot drops a bomb in the wrong place after being attacked by Hamas or Hezbollah, that is an unfortunate incident, but we're not going to have the Israeli Defense Forces and the Jewish state uh, be sent to an international body for a political show trial. Our money will not support that kind of behavior, and it will destroy any hope of peace. So to the Palestinians, your fate is in your own hands. If you choose to use the International Criminal Court uh, as a vindictive form in trying to marginalize the peace process and go after Israel in that venue, the American people will no longer feel like you're worthy of our support. And finally, this provocative act of joining the United Nations by the Palestinians, we have warned them, do not go around the peace process, do not go around Israel directly to the UN because that is a detrimental way to find peace, we will shut their office down in Washington. Their office in Washington has been open due to a waiver and a law that's been around since 1987. I believe their actions of applying for UN membership under the law will require the PLO office in Washington to be closed. Our amendment does two things. It will cut off funding to the Palestinians if they apply to the International Criminal Court against the State of Israel. It will automatically require the shutting down of the Washington office by applying for membership. With that, I'll turn this over to Senator uh, Schumer. Thank you, Senator Graham. It's once again a pleasure to work with you and 
uh, Bob Menendez, John Barrasso, to discuss a very serious matter. We are so disappointed with the Palestinian Authority's intention to go to the UN General Assembly to seek non-member state observer status at the UN. First, it's outrageous that the Palestinians rebuffed President Obama's personal appeal to President Abbas and insisted on pursuing this distinctly unhelpful initiative. The Palestinian action would violate both the letter and the spirit of the Oslo Accords. It's a huge setback for the prospects of restarting peace talks with Israel. It will also open the door to Palestinian efforts to conduct legal assaults against Israel in a variety of international forums, most importantly, the International Criminal Court. This is an unfortunate outcome. What the Palestinians are saying, if they were to go to the International Criminal Court, which they say they will once they achieve this status, is we don't want to negotiate with Israel. We want to ostracize Israel. We want to say there should be no Israel. It's totally contradictory to the belief in two states. If they are going to say that Israelis who defend themselves in one way or another should be treated as criminals for the defending the right of an Israel to exist? What does that say about their belief in peace and their willingness to recognize Israel? So it's a very unfortunate outcome that the United Nations will grant non-member state observer status at the UN, not only for what it does at the UN, but even more significantly for what it allows to happen at the International Criminal Court. And we think it really hurts any kind of direct talks. But President Abbas, now in the <clears throat> evil situation of trying to outdo Hamas in his own way, is threatening to use the enhanced status to pursue these initiatives. We are committed. Democrats and Republicans, you want to talk about bipartisan issues, you got one right here. We are committed to using every means at our disposal to ensure that this UN General Assembly vote does not serve as a precedent for elevating the status of the PLO and other UN bodies or international forums. Therefore, the legislation we uh, have proposed as an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act would first cut off all foreign aid to the Palestinian Authority if they assert any legal claims against Israel at the international criminal court. We know that aid is important to them. We want to see prosperity in the territory under the Palestinian Authority's jurisdiction. But when they do this, they are just throwing away hopes for peace in any way. So we believe it's appropriate and right, and we hope it won't come to that. And second, we'd immediately shut down the Palestinian office here in D.C. unless it's determined by the President that the Palestinians have entered into meaningful negotiations with Israel, because if they really are meaningfully negotiating, then these things wouldn't happen. Over the past year, Palestinian leaders have indicated their intention to apply for full membership in the International Criminal Court. And as I said, this would unfairly target Israel, it would isolate Israel, it would, it would prohibit Israelis from traveling in the world. It's saying you're, it is saying we don't want peace with Israel. We don't want an Israel, plain and simple. So we're going to stand united preventing this from happening, and we're going to do everything in our power to block the Palestinians from using the International Criminal Court to assert Palestinian claims against Israel, to isolate Israel, to say what they really mean to say that Israel should not be a country, there should not be two states, because they don't believe in a Jewish state. If they did that, that's what they'd be saying. Well, I join my colleagues in truly a bipartisan effort. We have great concerns about today what is happening in the United, in the United Nations General Assembly, where they're expected to vote to change the status of a Palestinian mission to a, a state with observer status. I am extremely concerned about this unilateral action on the part of the Palestinian Authority uh, to really circumvent the peace process uh, and in their effort uh, for a declared statehood. Uh, 
a vote at the United Nations General Assembly uh, to me is not about achieving peace. It's not about achieving stability in the Middle East, but it is rather a political maneuver. Uh, the, the best path to peace, uh, in my opinion, is, is through direct negotiations between um, those in Israel and the Palestinians, not through manipulations in the United Nations. The, the international community should not be united, or actually the international community should be united uh, in pushing both sides to negotiating together, negotiating at a table, not rewarding one of them for violating previous agreements. Congress needs to make it clear to the Palestinian Authority that its actions will have serious implications and consequences. To me, to, the path to peace in the Middle East is not through the United Nations. So uh, let me join my colleagues in saying I, I believe President Abbas's uh, misguided actions at the UN will not bring peace to the Palestinian people. It will not help restart uh, peace negotiations with Israel. And at the end of the day, despite what they think may be a strategic step, it will not bring political advantage to the Palestinian Authority. The day after the resolution, nothing will have changed, including America's unwavering support for Israel during this period of political turbulence in the Middle East. This unilateral approach to seeking to gain sovereignty on the part of the Palestinian Authority is provocative, it is reckless, and it threatens to inflame passions throughout the region. In order to achieve the creation of a Palestinian state with clear boundaries, with sovereignty, there has to be a negotiated settlement. There are no shortcuts here. The only way to achieve a true, lasting peace for the Palestinian people is through comprehensive negotiations and dialogue with Israel. Today's vote will not mean that the Palestinians will, in any real way, have their own state. But it could mean that the Palestinians will have a route forward to membership in UN agencies that could provide financing and more importantly uh, to join the International Criminal Court where they may simply use the court uh, to ultimately uh, use it as a vehicle to uh, attack Israel, to marginalize Israel, to try to create a, an environment in which already uh, there is a tremendous effort in the world not only to marginalize Israel but to somehow discredit it. So uh, I certainly want to call on the ICC to deny future membership uh, to a Palestinian authority as a non-member observer state, certainly before any final peace agreement is reached. Uh, and I believe that should the ICC attempt to adjudicate any matter proposed by the Palestinians, it should be the policy of the United States to terminate U.S. assistance. Uh, and lastly, uh, certainly uh, in this effort, we join our colleagues in making a very clear message to the Palestinians, for which we send an enormous amount of money to, uh, that in fact uh, they cannot have their offices here uh, if they are not going to engage in a process uh, in which they actually negotiate a, a peace with the State of Israel. Uh, and if they seek uh, this alternative means. Uh, we will not stand idly by and allow the Palestinians to evade the peace process by pressing their political cause to alternate means. We'll not provide financial support nor political support in the context of offices uh, in here in, in Washington. If the Palestinians are not serious about pursuing a real peace through real negotiations, there's only one path to peace. Israel and the world needs for the Palestinians to be a serious partner in peace. If they are, we will provide our financial and political support, and if not, we'll terminate that support. That choice is theirs. Yes. Questions? I, I got to go. Uh, okay. you stay? Yeah. Uh, sure. Can I just follow on what Bob said? In 2012, we appropriated $495 million in funding to the Palestinians. 395 million in economic support, 100 million in international nar narcotics control and law enforcement. In 2013, it was $440 million. The 2012 money has not yet been released because of provocative behavior by the Palestinians apart from the UN. So you're talking about a billion dollars in funding that could be affected 
if the Palestinians decide to file a complaint with the International Criminal Court against Israel. And many Americans will say, good, that's a billion dollars we can use here at home. My response is that I think the best thing for America is a two-state solution. I do not mind helping the Palestinian people who have many challenges to get a good economy or rule of law uh, nation established on the West Bank, but I cannot, along with my colleagues in good conscience, send a billion dollars to an organization who is trying to use the political tool of the United Nations and the International Criminal Court to undermine the last best chance for peace. Again, being a military person myself, I will not sit on the sidelines and use American dollars in a situation where the Palestinians can make every IDF member a war criminal simply by defending the sovereignty of the State of Israel. In the last conflict, there was, I think, over a thousand rockets fired into Israel. To the American people, what would we do if one rocket hit American soil? Not only have the Israelis militarily been measured, you've got to remember they left Gaza. Hamas is a terrorist organization, and now the Palestinian Authority on the West Bank, our last best partner in the peace process, has put the American people and the Congress in an untenable situation. By going around the peace process, by petitioning the United Nations to set yourself up to use the International Criminal Court to marginalize the Jewish state, you have lost your best partner in terms of the economic growth and political stability of the Palestinian people who reside in the West Bank. If you go down the road as being described of using the International Criminal Court to marginalize the Jewish state and make IDF members war criminals, you will have no one to blame but yourself for losing the money. But the most important thing you will have lost is the respect and support of the American people, who I think are indispensable when it comes to Mideast peace. So. Uh, on process, have you spoken to Senator Levin about the new vote on the amendment? And on substance, I'm curious, um, why not just cut off the aid because of the vote? I will take the first shot. No, we haven't informed Senator Levin yet. This is a reaction in real time to what we think is a very provocative, destabilizing event that will happen at 3 o'clock. Uh, why not cut the money off now? We're all trying to salvage the best, last best chance for peace, which is direct negotiations. The four of us represent Republican and Democrats who have different views on many things, but do yearn for peace in the Mideast. We believe in a two-state solution. We believe in the Palestinians having their own state. And the reason we're not yet cutting off funding is to try to restart the process by putting the Palestinians on notice. Your fate is in your own hands. The day you file a complaint with the International Criminal Court, you will have told all of us you could care less about peace. You're trying to destroy the Israeli state in a new way. We will not be part of that. Hopefully they will think about what they're doing in the future, and we got a chance to get back to the peace table. Bob. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and look, as I said in my remarks, uh, it's a very clear message to the Palestinians. The choice is yours. You know, we could have preempted that choice. The choice is yours. If you return to a negotiation, we're good. If you do not and pursue either the International Criminal Court or any other entity that seeks to marginalize or somehow discredit uh, the State of Israel inappropriately, then, you know, uh, you've made your choice. And that means, and that has a consequence. So we think this is a very balanced and fair way to make a very clear statement to the Palestinians uh, about that in some respects, their future is in their hands. It, they'll make that determination. Their future regarding the American people's support is definitely in their hands. And I would, I haven't whipped it, but Bob, you're a pretty good politician. I think we'd get an overwhelming vote. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm a statesman. That's a statesman, good. I think. I'm the politician. <laughs> we would win big. <laughs> One more. Okay. Uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Susan Rice has come under fire for handling over Benghazi and other issues. Um, is this a chance for her to sort of redeem herself at the U.N.? And I'm, the not, I'm not blaming anybody. The administration has tried to work with the Palestinians. The president is engaged personally with President Abbas. 
I'm not blaming the administration. I am saying to the Palestinians, you've created this problem, and uh, this is a major setback for U.S.-Palestinian relations, and I think the peace process, this is not about what we've done, this is about what they've done. I'm not here to criticize uh, the administration. The vote will be overwhelming. And to the international community, do you have any idea what you're doing here? It may be popular at home. The most popular thing for me and Bob is cut off aid to everybody, because we're broke. We're not going to do that. So I hope the international community understands that you're doing something that is very undermining of the peace process.